Hello, in this video we're going to use R to explore the joint distribution of the sample mean and the sample variance. And this is a follow-up video that I put out a day or two ago called Kruskal's Proof of the Joint Distribution of the Sample Mean and Sample Variance. And this article was by Steven Stigler. And essentially it goes like this, that they prove that the sample mean is normally distributed. Oh, and we're assuming that our data, underlying data, are normally distributed. So in this article they prove that the sample mean is normally distributed and the sample variance is distributed as a multiple of a chi-squared random variable and that they're independent and since they're independent then their joint distribution is actually just a product of the two marginal distributions. And that's kind of what we're going to explore in this video. Here we're going to generate some data. A sample size of 100 from a, a, di a normal distribution with mean 0 and sigma 5. We're going to repeat this experiment 20,000 times. So each time we conduct this experiment or generate random data of size 100, we're going to do a two 20,000 times and we're going to store it in a matrix and this is probably not the most efficient way to do this but it works and and it's relatively fast so I create a matrix and the rows are 100 so there's 100 rows in this matrix and there's 20,000 columns so each column represents a sample of size 100 from a normal distribution and, and they're all independent from one another. So when we take the mean of the columns and the variance of the columns there should be 20,000 observations in MN, this vector of the means of each experiment and V is the variance. So now when we plot it the mean versus the variance we get this blob so these are the mean values that we achieved and these are the variances that we achieved and notice it's a blob and while that's not a statistical term that's my term and there's no trends here there's no you know slant in the data there's no nothing and and that's because the mean and the variance are independent and this should be a blob now let's look at the means. So if we plot the means, the sample means of the 20,000 experiments and then I just say hey try to create a density for it and that's what this is. So most of the means are around zero and what I want to do is plot over the top the theoretical curve for this. And so in the article they said the X bar, the sample mean, was normal with mean mu and variance sigma squared over n. So when we plot that, this red line is essentially right on top of the uh, sample, you know, the sampling distribution. So, I mean, as it should be. Now let's look at the plot of the variances, and that's what this is. Notice the sort of the centered around 25, and that's what we generated our data to be, so that's that's accurate, at least seems accurate. Then we create a function. Oh, here's another thing. So in the article, they say that the variance is distributed as a chi-squared random variable times a constant. Well, that doesn't mean generate a chi-squared random variable and multiply it times this constant. You have to figure out what this distribution is. And this distribution, a constant times a chi-squared, is a gamma random variable, which is what this variable here is. And I have an a interesting video called Using R and, and the Relationship Between the Exponential Chi-Squared and Gamma Distributions, where we review this. We don't look at the theoretical aspects of it, but we do lots of R commands and stuff like that to show you that they are the same. So now let's plot the theoretical curve for the sample variance and notice that it's right on top of each other.
as it should be. Now I got a question for you. So here we use a sample size of 10 or 100. What if we used sample sizes of 20 and repeat this? Would the sample curve and the theoretical curve be so exact? And so let's let's run this. So we plot the mean and the variance and again it's a blob my non-statistical term there so there's there's no obvious relationships there so we plot the sample means we plot what the theoretical curve should be and again it's really close really tight and so the answer is as it should be I mean these are exact results right and we're and we're running this experiment 20,000 times so it's going to see about every possibility in this curve and that's why it's so close and if we look at the sample variances there's the sample variance plot the theoretical curve of the top it is also so close as it should be I think it'd be more surprising if it wasn't right on top of it so let's look at this then so we're repeating this experiment um, 20,000 times so we're seeing all the possibilities so if we were to repeat this 500 times then I would expect it to be actually sort of close but not nearly as close as if repeating it 20,000 times so let's have a sample size of 20 repeat this experiment 500 times so there's the means versus the variance we get the blob here's the sample means and let's plot the theoretical curve over the top and notice that there's a little bit bigger gaps everywhere but still surprisingly close you know as it should be these are exact calculations and so plot the variance and then the theoretical distribution or curve on top of it and notice that there are some bigger gaps but also very very close as it should be well that's all I have for today hopefully you enjoyed that I sure did please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye